This video explains how to draw two data sets with different sizes using the ggplot2 package in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. As a first step for this tutorial, we first need to create two example data frames, as you can see in lines 2 to 8 of the code. So after running lines 2 to 5 of the code, a first data set called data large is appearing at the top right. And we can click on this data set to open a new window, which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our data frame contains the columns X and Y and many rows. So more precisely, 1000 rows. In the next step, in lines 7 to 8 of the code, we can create a second data set, which is called data small. And once again, we can click on the name of this data set on the top right of RStudio to open a new window, which is showing the structure of this data set as well. And as you can see, our second data set, data small, contains the same column names, X and Y. However, it contains only 10 rows. Now, let's assume that we want to draw these data in a combined ggplot2 plot. Then we first need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines 10 and 11. I have installed this package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 11 of the code. And then in the next step, we can use the ggplot function in combination with the geompoint function to create our combined plot. And it's important to note that within the ggplot function, I'm specifying null instead of the name of the data set. And then in the geompoint function, I am specifying the first data set and the color that I want to use for the points of this data set. And then I'm calling the geompoint function once again. And then I'm specifying the small data set instead of the large data set. I'm also specifying a different color and a different size for the points that correspond to this data set. So after running lines 13 to 18 of the code, a new blot object is appearing at the top right, which is called ggp1. And we can draw this blot to the bottom right of RStudio by running line 19 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a new scatter blot. And this scatter blot shows the large data set with blue dots and these dots are much smaller than the other dots that correspond to the second to the smaller data set because the second data set is represented by red points with a larger size. So in this first example I have explained how to draw such a plot based on multiple calls of the geopoint function. However, depending on the number of data sets that you have available, you might use the code that I'm showing you in the next example, starting in line 21 of the code. So as a first step of this example, I'm creating a new data set which combines all of our data sets. And for this, I'm using the data frame and the rbind functions. And then I'm also creating new columns for the colors of our points and for the sizes of our points. So after running lines 21 to 26 of the code, a new data set called data all is appearing at the top right. And if you click on this data set, a new window is opened, which is showing all the values of our two data sets, as well as the colors and the point sizes that I want to use. Then in the next step, I can use the ggplot function once again. And this time I'm specifying the name of our combined data set instead of null, as I did in the previous example. And then I'm specifying the geompoint function only once. And I'm setting the color and size arguments to be equal to the new columns that I have created in our new data set. So after running lines 28 to 30 of the code, another plot object called ggp2 is appearing at the top right. And if you run line 31 of the code, this plot is created at the bottom right. And as you can see, this plot shows exactly the same graphic as the previous example. However, this time we have created this plot based on only one combined data frame instead of two different data frames. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. 
I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.